Welcome to Irish Football Weekly, where we talk Notre Dame football here on The Grueling Truth. My name is Josh Benjamin, host of The Real Deal. Uh, I'm just one of two uh, hosts on this show. The other host, Tony Hunter, a former tight end of the Irish from uh, the team's 1979 to 1982, who was also a first-round draft pick, 12th overall by the Buffalo Bills in the 83 draft. You can catch us each week on our website, thegruelingtruth.net, also Stitcher, Spreaker, iTunes, Google Music, and iHeartRadio. Tony, how you doing, my man? Oh, I'm doing pretty good, Josh. I, uh, I tell you what, the football, college football gods have been, I guess they had mercy on us and brought this season to an end. <laughs> it's been a long, tough season for the uh, for the Fighting Irish. Uh, yes, definitely, and that's probably an understatement of what the season is like <laughs> for uh, Man, for, us, yes. and for everyone else out there uh, uh, as a part of Irish Nation. So, yeah, let's um, let's dive in here. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the end. Uh, well, or fortunately, however you want to look at it, the season came to an end um, last week with USC. Pretty much uh, handing us a, a nice butt whipping of 45 to 27 out there in Los Angeles, and uh, at first it looked good. Um, it was seven to three, and then uh, USC turned it on and didn't look didn't look back, and so uh, they give us a loss to put us at four and eight, uh, raise their uh, record to nine and three. So we we got to talk about it just a little bit, Tony. Um, some thoughts on the game? Yeah, you know what I. Uh... I went into that game knowing that USC was playing some really had been playing some really good football of late, and I thought it was a long shot for us to be able to win that game. But uh, we came out and we made it competitive. That first quarter, first half of the game, I was a little surprised. That, I mean, we really made it competitive, but it just seemed like that second half, the same thing happened that's been happening all year. We uh. We forget to wake up in that second half and come out and play football. And uh, USC just took over uh, in that second half. Yeah, and, you know, just multiple things happened. You know, a punt return for a touchdown, an interception uh, return for a touchdown. So, and, you know, that kind of just put it away at halftime, really, because the the sales for us uh, were uh, were flat and and weren't uh, weren't sailing very well after uh, those two big plays and made it 24-7 at half. And like we said, it, they just kind of took over and uh, basically uh, put it to us uh, out there in L.A. So. Oh, yeah. They have a lot of athletes out there. And like I said, they're playing some really good football here, late, here lately. And uh, so um, I just think the talent was just a little too much for us and, uh, right now. So. Yeah, and, and some bright spots. Uh, if you, I mean, I, I would call these bright spots, but uh, very few of them. Uh, so – Basically, Josh Adams, the last, I don't know how many weeks, I, I want to say in the last four or five, he has been on it with, with carrying the football and having a high average per carry. This week, or I'm sorry, last week, he, he had 180 yards on 17 carries, which was basically a first down every time he touched the ball, which is... Right, uh, right. You know what? I, Josh Adams, I like him. I like Josh Adams. He's durable. He's going to be there for you week in and week out. I think he finished the season with almost a thousand yards, nine hundred and thirty yards rushing, five TDs. He had a good solid season. Um I was hoping that Dexter Williams could get in there and get a little more experience. Uh, I think he's I think he's a really explosive player. But uh I tell you what, Josh Adams, he's durable, he runs hard, and I see why the coaching staff really likes him at tailback. Yeah, and so uh very impressive uh last few weeks with him uh, in the backfield. And uh, going to the defensive side, this is very impressive in my opinion. Uh, freshman cornerback Julian Love, he had nine tackles, seven of them solo, and a forced fumble this past week. And so, I mean, that's pretty good when you're asking a freshman to come out and play on the defense <coughs> or offense. It doesn't matter, just like you talked about with yourself with a couple games in, in your playing career at Notre Dame. That's got to be tough. Oh, yeah, it's tough when you go in as a freshman. Uh, but, he, I mean, he just looked to be playing really confident. He's a good athlete. And uh, he just went out there and uh, competed with those guys. And uh, I think he's going to be a good player for us. Yeah, and so um, that kind of concludes the season for the Irish. You know, 
not the typical record they would, you know, end with uh, in accordance to their program. Um, oh, my God. Oh, you know, I mean, it started off with, uh, what was it, a week before the Texas game, I think it was, we had six players suspended. I mean, that was just a shock to the system right there. We're getting ready to play our opening game. And, uh, I mean, we were, they, we were projected to have a playoff-type team this year, to be in the playoffs. And then all of a sudden this bad news comes out about the players being suspended, and it just seemed to get worse every week. <laughs> it was, it's just been a long, tough season for the Irish. Uh, yeah, I, I totally agree. With the suspension there with those players, and then, you know, they started out top ten. They were number ten in the nation when they played Texas, got beat there, obviously. And right. like said, it just went downhill. So many close games that – they didn't uh, put away or didn't uh, come through and persevere. and Because it could be a totally different story if they close out a couple games, you know, have a couple more wins. Maybe maybe it's seven and five this season instead of four and eight. Uh, and we can right, go back right. to those later on and think, man, we could have we done a little bit better, obviously. And, and so, basically, this season um, was – you know, lack of a better term, it was bad. It was terrible. Uh, oh, it really was. Oh, four, four and eight is definitely unacceptable at Notre Dame. It is definitely unacceptable. And uh, I'm just looking to see how we're going to resolve this this situation. You know, we're under – right now there's more, there are more questions. As, as I said, there's more questions surrounding the Notre Dame football program right now than answers. Um but I, I think we'll we'll, uh, we'll rebound next year, some way and somehow. I think uh, those that are in charge uh, to make the decisions will make the right decisions, and, and we'll start to rebound from this. But uh, from everything from wins being vacated, uh, what was it, 2012? Uh, I mean, for two years, uh, the wins were, had to be vacated, uh, according to the uh, NCAA. Um, but right now, that's being appealed. So that's that's you know that 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 right now is something uh, I'm looking forward to see seeing what happens, and I'm hoping we'll win on appeal so that we don't have to vacate those losses. But uh, there's a lot going on right now. A lot of decisions have to be made. Yeah, and just kind of we're going through those those unfortunate times. Uh, the, the players suspended. And then uh, the defensive coordinator getting fired and hire, you know putting someone else in there, which that takes time. That doesn't just immediately change during, especially during the middle of the season. That doesn't uh, right. prove the right. Right, I was shocked by that. I was really shocked that we made an in-season change of such a such an important coaching position. That uh, defensive coordinator. I mean, that's you know things have to be pretty bad in order to do that in season. And I didn't think we would, but we did. And I thought the defense came out and, and showed a little spark after that change, but uh, just never got to the point to where, you know, we could we could be competitive um, out there. Just never got to the point where I felt good about our defense out there, uh, felt confident in our defense. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. And so you have, you have the defensive coordinator change, and then you have these allegations, and on top of that, uh, you have all these these games that are close that are probably frustrating, obviously to the to the, obviously the fan base, the alumni, uh, us, obviously, and and the coaching staff and players. And so, you know, it <laughs> this snowballed from the very beginning, like you said, and and so oh, it really did. And, and right now, Josh, we we started last season with two starting quarterbacks. The luxury of having two starter starting quarterbacks. Uh, Kaiser, of course, and Malik Zaire, uh, both of those guys that started. Um, Zaire, I believe he was 3-0 and as a starting quarterback for Notre Dame. And uh, Kaiser came in, and he played well. He had a good season. But right now, if Kaiser decides to go in the NFL draft, Malik Zaire has already uh, requested and was granted permission to transfer away from Notre Dame. I think he graduates from Notre Dame uh, pretty soon. So he's eligible to go somewhere else and play right away. And uh, from what I hear, Florida, Michigan State, Pitt, and Wisconsin are really interested in his services. And then 
the BFL may be really interested in Kaiser Services. So that leaves us with, who was it, Brandon Lindbergh? Mm-hmm. Uh, at quarterback. So it's, uh, it'll be interesting to see how this thing turns out. Yes, I was actually getting ready to point that out with the possibility of having a very inexperienced quarterback next year with, like you said, uh, Malik getting a transfer request accepted and moving on from the Irish. And then Kaiser, you know, we're, un- we're unsure, more than likely, uh, he's probably going to go on uh, due to his uh, pretty pretty decent season, really. And uh, yeah, he had a good year. He had a good year. Yeah, and so uh, with him two possibly gone, uh, wow, that leaves a big gap of that really important position on the offense. Yeah, yeah. yeah Kaiser, uh, he actually uh, he passed for almost three thousand yards, um, twenty six uh, passing TDs. Uh, he had an up and down year. Definitely had an up and down year. But I, I thought he had a pretty strong year. And I think that's going to come down to what the NFL scouts are saying, uh, where he's projected to go in, in the NFL draft. I mean, at one time I was hearing Cleveland was really interested in taking him in with the first pick of the draft, which kind of makes sense because he's from Ohio, and he has a, I'm sure he has a large following in that part of the state. So that kind of makes sense that Cleveland may be interested in taking him in the first pick of the draft. Now, whether this past season uh, was strong enough, if he had a strong enough season to do that, um, it will be interesting to see if they decide to take him with that first pick. Absolutely. And so <clears throat> that, that that's in question. And, and uh, speaking of questions, uh, let's briefly talk about Brian Kelly. Uh, I was listening to the radio in my car on, on my way in the office, and uh, I heard something. I didn't get a chance to listen completely. I just heard a, a comment say, that was said that Brian Kelly is linked to the Cincinnati Bengals, which is oh. um, I, uh, just a, a phrase that was said by one of the announcers on the uh, radio, and I didn't get a chance to hear what they actually said after that because it went to a commercial. But, um so, well, the only thing that I know, I know he, um, you know, of course, he left the University of Cincinnati to go to Notre Dame. It's interesting. I tell you what, the life of a college football coach, I mean, it can, it can turn on you in a hurry. You know, Brian Kelly, like I said, we were predicted uh, to possibly go to a playoff, be in the playoffs this year. Um, he was at UC and went to Notre Dame. Also, the guy that was down at that's down at Tennessee, what's his name? Is it Butch Davis? Butch Jones. Um, Butch, Jones. Butch yeah. Jones. Yeah, he was at the University of Cincinnati, and his Tennessee team was projected to be in the playoffs um, this year. But he's had a tough year. So all of a sudden, those two guys look like they want to have top five, top ten teams. Now all of a sudden there's a possibility that the jobs are on the line. So your fortunes can change in a hurry in college football. Absolutely. So a lot of questions uh, going into this offseason uh, for the Irish. And uh, a positive thing that, that, that happened, uh, uh, the safety, junior safety, uh, Drew Tranquil, he was named to the academic uh, All-American, All-American Division I football team, and that's uh, okay. chosen by – the College Sports uh, Information Directors of America. And so uh, that's, that's something that only 60 players from Notre Dame that have went through there have uh, achieved. And so uh, that's a pretty remarkable um, accolade there that he, that he got uh, for his academics, Definitely. obviously. And, uh, his Definitely. Definitely. And so, uh, so that, that's a, a good, uh, good thing there for him to – be able to do, and the last person to do that uh, actually was Corey Robinson, a wide receiver, uh, back in 2014. <laughs> um, so some great things uh, uh, that aren't necessarily uh, group, it's more individual here, but uh, some good things to come out of uh, this season, that was definitely one of them. So uh, congratulations yeah, to Drew Drainquill, for sure, on getting that uh, high, high achievement award there, so... Anyway, definitely, so, definitely. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Congratulations to him. Yeah, it's a uh, pretty remarkable award to get um, throughout a college football. Uh, and actually, a little fun fact, kind of uh, using one of them right now. 
uh, basically they're Notre Dame is third uh, in having that many players. They, like I said, they had 60. Uh, he's the 60th player, and Nebraska and Penn State are, are the only ones that have more than them. So, pretty amazing stat there for uh, the Irish. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know that was uh, the guys from Notre Dame. That was the thing that uh, really made me want to go to Notre Dame after uh, I made my visit there. I actually made six six visits around the country, and it was the guys that I met at Notre Dame that made me that made the decision for me. Uh, to go to Notre Dame because I, I, I really liked the guys. I felt like uh, there was a that, there could be a, a good bond that we would get. Um, so you know, it's the type of guys that are at Notre Dame that really made me uh, want to come to Notre Dame. Yeah, and uh, very prestigious school, obviously football wise and academic. So uh, that's tough to do uh, to manage that. Uh, for any uh, university or college, for that matter, as far as managing your time to become a great academic student and, uh, of course, being able to play at a high level um, on the football field or any any sport, for that matter. So, uh, and a lot of that is being questioned right now with that NCAA suspension and everything. A lot of that is being questioned. And I just hope that we take the, the right actions uh, to go ahead and, and restore our name and restore our name and uh, – and I'm sure we will. I'm sure we will. Notre Dame's been uh, handling things the right way for a long, long time, and uh, I don't think that'll stop now. I think we'll we'll um, go ahead and get this thing cleared up and, and restore our name. I'm hope I'm hopeful anyway. Yeah, and uh, yeah, those allegations obviously for any program aren't great, and so um, that <laughs> that's a never a good thing that to to do, but. Now that I think about it, um, back in 2012 and 2013, uh, there was an issue with Everett Golson uh, with some academic dishonesty, and I don't know if that was a part of that or not. They haven't released any names, at least from what I could find uh, or hear. So um, that that could be that situation there um, with maybe a couple more people added to that. But I'm just speculating just from uh, previous knowledge. So uh, Yeah, I hadn't heard his name. I hadn't heard his name brought up in this this last situation. Uh but now, as far as on the field is concerned, uh, I think we have a good nucleus of um, skilled players that are coming back. You know, I, I, uh, it was Josh Adams, uh, Dexter Williams, uh, is it Teron Falston, C.J. Sanders, uh, Kevin Stefferson. Uh, I think we have a, a, a solid core of skilled players that are coming back that we could we could build from and uh it just depends on what our quarterback situation is going to be like uh whether or not kaiser decides to come back and so we'll see yeah and uh defensively as well they have a bunch of young players on that defensive side not only the offensive side but the defensive side as well that have made a huge impact this year as far as getting experience and playing time because uh defensively you got to be you got to be well uh, experienced, in my opinion, and you have to be able to understand the game a little bit. And you know, putting those freshmen, sophomores in due to injury, and, and because well, they're, they're better than the next person. Uh, is right, too. right. They, so. Yeah, they did get some valuable playing time this year. Uh, I wish those guys that I had mentioned had gotten a little bit more experience. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, there was there was some. Uh, they did get get some viable playing time this year, so that's yeah. something that we can build from. Absolutely. Now, uh, this is kind of. I did want to mention this though, Josh. Um, Go ahead. Go ahead. And it's a little it's a little concerning. We had a four, we had a four star star linebacker uh, recruit that decommitted from Notre Dame. Pete Pete Warner, I think, is his name, and he's from. Mount Vernon, Indiana, I think he's the number two player in the state of Indiana. And, I mean, he had committed to Notre Dame. And, I, from my understanding, he was helped to recruit other guys to Notre Dame. And then I guess he made a visit to Ohio State. And, of course, our record came uh, played a part of that. But he, uh, he decommitted. He decommitted. And that's not, that's not a good thing. That can make your recruiting 
awful tough when you start having guys do stuff like that. Um, and the thing that was shocking about it, he's from Indiana, so he grew up watching Notre Dame football, and uh, that's that's not a good thing. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you were right. He is from Indiana. Pete Warner's his name, and uh, yeah, uh, four star recruit decommitting. That <clears throat> hopefully that's not a sign of uh, what's going to happen in the future with other recruits because of the, the things that are happening. Yeah, and like I said, um, I remember Pete Buchanan was our fullback when I first went into Notre Dame, and uh, I can, he was a fullback, and uh, I forget exactly which town he was from, but uh, I remember talking to Pete, and he was saying he just grew up, uh, and he, would, he's, he, he's, he decided to go to Notre Dame back when he was in uh, grade school. He just never thought about going anywhere else, and uh I think a lot of guys, uh, Stacy Turan is for, he was from Indianapolis. Or guys, uh, Dave Dorson from Muncie, Indiana. When those guys grew up in Indiana and they start watching Notre Dame football, nobody else matters. And uh, they've decided to go to Notre Dame uh, at a young age. And uh, to see that kind of change, I hope it isn't changing. But, uh, yep. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's a trying time right now, and uh, they got 23 recruits that have uh, maintained their commitment to the Irish for the 2017-2018 classes. So good, good. That's that's a good sign uh, as of right now, and uh, some top players. And so uh, we'll see how this uh, off season goes with the sanctioning with the NCA and that that situation, right. and, and with uh, with Kaiser and uh, Zaire, and obviously the head coach, and then uh, the recor- recruiting pitches, and, and how that's going to go as far as the class coming in. So. A lot of questions, like we said at the very beginning, that uh, will be answered only in uh, when time when time says so, and uh, we'll uh, we'll address it as we need it. So, um, yes. Moving on to our next uh, segment here, three toughest picks of the week, which we we obviously just ended the, the regular season, and uh, Tony, it's it's a tie. I uh, <laughs> I came back and uh, I struggled. Uh, I made a speech for coming back and, and going through, persevering through all those tough times, but I, uh, I decided to decline the speech uh, to come back and tie it because, you know, ties are not very fun. But in this case, you know, uh, I think I can live with a uh, tie, especially how I started out. In the well, yeah, well, nobody lost. Nobody. And then another thing, you're keeping the score, though, Josh. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> good point, good point. Like, that's a good point. So, um, I tried to be as honest as possible, but it, it may, something may have happened. I, you know, I misremember, you know, according to Ryan. <laughs> I misremember. <laughs> so... Uh, hey, nobody, I, nobody lost. That's that's a good thing. Nobody lost. That's true. That's very true. And the uh, the record ended up uh, eighteen and twelve uh, for both of us. And uh, so we uh, we ended up all all tied up. But um, and all uh, all fun uh, things uh, going on there. That was a good time. The oh of- yeah, oh yeah. And man, I can't believe. I thought for sure Michigan would beat Ohio State this year, and uh, Ohio State pulled it out. They pulled it out. Yeah. Great game. Yeah, it was a, definitely a great game. And, uh, yeah, I agree. I thought Michigan was going to win, even though I took Ohio State. I took the home team in that matter. But, um, but yeah, so, yeah, definitely a great game. And uh, so that, uh, that concludes the three toughest picks uh, for the year. And so, um, you know, we had the other upset of the week segment in which we talked about different upsets. And uh, we had some fun there, obviously. And, uh we obviously our best, our favorite time was Irish prediction, uh, in which we got to talk about uh, our way of trying to win the game and our prediction and uh, the score and whatnot, which was awesome. Oh my God! I said I, I hope Notre Dame would put up forty points, and it was USC that put up forty, put up forty five against us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so good times there with uh, that segment, and uh, of course. The uh, fun facts for the finish, which I, I do have one, not a great one, obviously, and uh, how it basically kind of wraps up our season here. The last time they had a losing record was uh, 2007, and that was uh, under Charlie Weiss when they went three and nine. And so, wow. Uh, which I, I, you know, that's that was almost a decade ago, and 
obviously uh, that doesn't happen at Notre Dame in which, you know, we got to take our lumps this year and learn from them, obviously, and answer all those questions we've talked about, Tony, and move on, obviously, kind of have a short memory of what happened here and learn and move on and uh, forget the bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had forgotten all about that, that season under Weiss, but – we got past it, didn't we? We, we moved on from that, what, 3-9, and nine, did you say? It was 3-9 and nine one year? Yeah, 3-9 and nine in tw- uh, 2007. And then, you wow. Know, five, years later, five years later, they were in the national championship game. So, who knows, wow. who knows uh, what's going to happen, obviously, uh, in the future with all those questions we talked about. Tony, yeah. do, you have, do you have anything else you want to talk about or say uh, to our listeners out there or just anything in general? Oh, well, I'm just uh... – like we were saying, there's more questions than answers right now. And I'm interested to see how we get this thing resolved, how we get everything resolved, and I'm sure we will. But uh, I've had a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun doing this, Josh. I I love football. I love talking football. I love talking Notre Dame football. And uh, this gives me an opportunity to. So I want to thank you for that. And I, I've had a blast. Absolutely. I just want to bounce off that, too. I just want to thank our listeners. I, and I posted something on Facebook that uh, we've had an extreme jump in numbers as far as listeners uh, go for our wow. show in the last month or so. And I don't want to get into actual numbers, but it's an extreme jump, which, uh, you know, I thank you for that because I really don't have anything to do with that because I'm not really insightful. I try to uh, play along there and fake a lot of people. So, Tony, good job on that aspect. And uh, uh, yeah, well, that's great to hear. That's great to hear yeah. because I, I just try. I, I do. I like to give my point, my my opinion, and just try to be honest with it. But uh, Notre Dame has a loyal following, man. It's uh, I've been aware of that for a long, long time. And uh, great football fans, great football fans. Absolutely, absolutely. And so uh, that that really concludes uh, the. Irish Football Weekly Show. Now, Tony and I discussed about possibly having some shows here and there in the off season to talk about those questions and anything that comes up uh, Irish football. So, stay tuned uh, to our uh, website, thegruelingtruth.net, for any updates of different shows coming on, especially ours, obviously, with uh, talking about Irish football. But that concludes our weekly show for the season. Uh, don't forget to check out our website. Obviously, I just said that thegruelingtruth.net. Uh, which have multiple shows, including ours, of course, and also our other shows. Uh, mine's called The Real Deal. Uh, it's a personal show, talk about various topics. And then Tony has an L.A. Rams show where he talks about Rams football out there in L.A. So you can listen to those or any others that you'd like uh, on multiple medias besides the website, like Stitcher, Spreaker, like I said before, Google Music, iTunes, and our iHeartRadio. Uh, Tony and I are also on social media, like I've said before, on Facebook, you know, add us on there. Tell us uh, you're a fan, a listener, and we get the chance to talk to you about some Irish football. Also, I'm on Twitter. You can follow me in, uh, at CoachJB4 is my Twitter handle. And so, Tony, you know, this is, this is kind of a uh, – not necessarily a goodbye, uh, but it's kind of a hold on for a little bit, talk a little bit later type of thing. So, sure. I look forward to it. I look forward to it. It's been a – it's been a tough season for Notre Dame football. <laughs> it's been a tough season. I'm kind of glad to see this one finally come to an end, to be honest, Josh. It's, it's been a tough one, but uh, I've had fun doing this, and uh, I look forward to doing some future ones. I really do. Sure. And, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more with uh, the season kind of concluding quickly <laughs> and get, answering those questions, like we, like we said, through time. And we'll hopefully have some more – positive things to say at the next uh, next time we do our show, which you will have to stay tuned to uh, Irish Football Weekly, which will obviously change from weekly to kind of whenever we want. So anyway, uh, for my host, Tony Hunter, this is Josh Benjamin signing off for Irish Football Weekly. Go Irish. Peace. Go Irish. Hang in there, Irish fans. Go Irish. <laughs>